Hey friends, Dr. Renee here, the women's holistic health expert, back at you this week to talk about stress. And yes, I've been talking a lot about stress this month because April is National Stress Awareness Month. So I wanted to finish out the month talking a little bit more about it and giving you a few more tools that you can use to help cope with stress. And this week, we're going to talk about the things that you can actually take or ingest to help with stress. Today, in particular, we're going to be talking about what vitamins you can take. Now, I know what you might be thinking, I don't need vitamins. I get it all in my food. Well, I am food first, meaning I definitely want you to get your nutrients in your food if possible. However, we now know that our food is not as good as it used to be. Our soil quality is poorer than, than it used to be. And let's be honest, many people's diets consists, consist of packaged and processed foods, which we know is really not very nutrient dense, right? So at a baseline, most people are nutrient deficient because we're not taking in the appropriate amount of nutrients in our food. There are certain other things that actually may play a part in this also, such as age, as we get older, um, we actually don't absorb our vitamins as well. Our gut gets old too. Some medical conditions actually can impair your ability to make certain vitamins or maybe even deplete your vitamins even quicker. Um, certain medications may actually play a part. And we already talked about nutrition, right? The standard American diet that many eat actually makes you nutrient deficient. So the first vitamin I wanna talk about is one of my favorite. It's called magnesium. And honestly, what I'm gonna talk about today is essentially what I talked about to all my patients at their first visit. Because essentially the vitamins I'm gonna talk about today are usually those that were that my patients were deficient in. So if I'm talking to my patients about it, I'm talking to you about it, okay? And so magnesium. Magnesium is uh, actually was found in a study in 2010 to potentially Im uh, improve anxiety and stress. It is a natural muscle relaxant and it also has been found to relax what they call the central nervous system which is uh, part of our fight and flight response. It also directly uh, suppresses the adrenal glands. What the adrenals do, do the adrenals do? They make a hormone called cortisol, okay? So if they help calm down the, the adrenals, it helps calm down the cortisol level, okay? It also has been found to block some of the um, stress hormones from entering the brain. So therefore, if you make them from your adrenals, sometimes magnesium actually blocks them from actually getting to your brain to act. Uh, it also increases a hormone called GABA. And GABA, I'm not gonna go into the big long name, it's G-A-B-A, -A, actually helps promote relaxation, all right? So across the board, uh, magnesium was always one of those, those essential vitamins that I would pretty much put all of my patients on eat at least a lower dose until I got their blood work back and confirmed that they were indeed low um, because low levels actually worsen anxiety and stress. So if a person already has lots of anxiety and stress about things, and then we compound that by the fact that they're low in magnesium, that's going to make it even worse, right? So next you ask, well, doctor, what kind of magnesium should I take? My personal favorite is something called magnesium glycinate or magnesium glycinate, some people call it. And in my opinion, I find that it's better absorbed. However, if you're a woman with issues with constipation, you may want to supplement with magnesium citrate, which actually will help you go to the bathroom. The only problem with magnesium citrate is just like it can help you go to the bathroom, too much of it will give you diarrhea. So I think the biggest side effect that I used to always see uh, in my patients is if they were on the higher end of, of doses um, that I used to recommend, they would get diarrhea if they weren't taking the, the glycinate form, which I recommended. There were very few people that would actually get um, loose stools from the magnesium glycinate, but it is, it is a potential. Um, the next group of vitamins that I would actually recommend are the B vitamins. And again, this is something that I would recommend to all of my patients at the first visit. These are also known as mood boosters. Um, do you ever remember those people getting the B12 shots and they were like, oh my gosh, I have so much energy, right? Well, now you can take it in the pill and get that same amount of energy. The B vitamins do give you energy. They, um, they do um, get used up with stress. So that's why I would recommend them at my first visit with my patients because 
classically, 99% of the people coming in to see me were stressed. So they were deficient in magnesium and the B vitamins. Um, and you know, with the B vitamins, you don't have to worry necessarily about how much because they do they don't get stored in your body. Okay, you do have to remember we do have to be cautious of how much. However, they don't get stored in your body, which means that you can actually you actually need to take them every day. All right, unlike something like vitamin D, which does get stored in your body. One B vitamin in particular is called choline, and it actually produces another chemical called acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is actually uh, regulates the stress response. So think about it. If you're low in choline and you're not producing the acetylcholine, what's your stress response going to be, right? And actually choline is found in egg yolks. So think about it. How many people jumped off of eggs back when there was that big cholesterol scare that, you know, oh my God, high cholesterol, everyone's going to have heart disease. You got to get off eggs. You got to stop eating the egg yolks, right? Well, they stopped getting sufficient amounts of choline and therefore maybe everyone's anxiety level went up a little bit more, right? Um, also, you know, they do, B vitamins are essential in making um, serotonin and dopamine, which are two serotonins like your happy chemical and GABA is like your relaxation chemical, which I just talked about when it came to magnesium. And there are certain B vitamins. Um, there's lots of them, B1, B2, B3, B6. You know, there's a lot. Uh, there's a B5, I forgot B5. Um, and so there's a lot of different ones and they have lots of different roles outside of helping with stress, okay? So I'm not even gonna talk about them in this video, but essentially the fact that we're stressed and depleting a lot of our B vitamins, we don't have enough to make a lot of these chemicals called the serotonin and GABA to help us uh, with relaxation and stress, okay? Um, and you know, as far as recommending um, a B vitamin type, I usually recommend a B complex, which means it has a little of all of the B vitamins in it. It doesn't have a lot of any one. So if I felt someone needed extra B12, I would get them extra B12 because there's not a lot of B12 in a, in a B complex. Um, there's also multivitamins. So usually if you take a multivitamin, as long as it's a good multivitamin, you gotta be careful. I never used to recommend just a regular multi because I would give strategic uh, supplements based on what was going on with my patient. Um, so it's either a B complex usually or a multi because a multivitamin will have all of the B complex vitamins in it usually. So take a look at that. The only caveat I have to say or, or caution are some side effects that you might have with B vitamins. And uh, I think the most impressive is usually a flush that you might get. Um, and this is usually from the B3 or the niacin in the B complex. The other thing is they are very energizing. So if your body's really low on energy because you have adrenal issues, when you start with a B complex, you might want to start with a lower dose. If it says two capsules, just take one to start with and see how your body acclimates to it. Okay. The other thing is your um you're actually going to have like neon yellow urine. So don't worry, that is just you peeing out the B vitamins. Okay. Um, and I was going to go into probiotics, but you know what? I think I'm just going to leave it at that for today. So you got two. Um, I will talk more in depth about probiotics this week in the very special five-day mini course that I am doing in my Holistic Health Group on Facebook. It is talking all things stress. So it's Heck Your Health, the Stress Lab, a very, a very amazingly good five-day mini course where we are going to dig, um, delve deep into gut health in which in which case I'm going to talk about probiotics. So if you want to hear about the probiotics that I'd recommend and why and how it helps with stress, because that's what we're talking about in the group, hop on over um, to my uh, drrenewellenstein.com, my, my website, and um, there is a link to my Facebook group there. Okay, or send me a message and I'll get you the link to register for the group. All right? All right, guys, hope that helped. I hope... Um, you consider supplementing with these vitamins to help with your stress if you have stress. And stay tuned for the next video in the series where I'm actually going to talk about some other supplements and herbs that you can take to help with your stress.